Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and in this video, obviously I'm going to be showing you guys my journey with getting a skinny BBO in Colombia. So um, I'm actually in the recovery house now. I'm in Dr. Alder's um, recovery house or Millennial. I'm going to enter the clip of the room, but I want to tell you guys about my experience flying down here. I'm also, after I tell you guys my experience, um, I'm going to enter a clip of when I first came to the recovery house the lunch I ate yesterday and the dinner I ate yesterday. So um, today is Wednesday, I got here Tuesday and my surgery is on Friday. So I just got out the shower and um, threw on a dress. Today is actually my pre-op with the doctor. Um, I'm excited because I'm like skinny so I'm just nervous I won't have enough fat for the look I'm trying to achieve but I don't know everybody's saying that they think I'm gonna look good because I'm thin but like I have like a natural big butt to kind of be skinny so let me tell y'all about flying down here so I came from Atlanta and I took a connecting flight to Columbia um I had to get to the airport at 4 a.m. my flight boarded at 5 20 I actually should have got there earlier but I got there at 4 a.m. When I got to the airport, I had to show them my passport. I had to show them the migration form, Columbia's migration uh, email confirmation and my COVID test. The migration website for Columbia, they didn't send me an email saying that I completed it. So I had to go back on the website and re-register everything. A message came up that said, you are already registered. So I just, the agent told me to screenshot that and keep that to show when I get to Miami to go to Columbia and to show when I get to Columbia. So if that happens to you, just screenshot that message and show the agent. So um, my flight from Atlanta to Miami was only like an hour and 20 minutes. And then my flight from Miami to Columbia was three hours. Um, but then the time goes back one hour from Eastern Standard Time. When I got to Columbia, um, I was so naive thinking like the darker uh, black people that I saw here was... Um, like black people from America at the airport. So I'm like going up to them like, hey, do you speak English? And they're like, no, Espanol. So <laughs> I played myself with that and I was just expecting my cell phone to work so I can translate stuff. But when I first got here, like at the airport, my cell phone would not work. Like I couldn't text, I couldn't use Wi-Fi, I couldn't call. Even though I pay AT&T $10 a day for unlimited international. I don't know what was going on so I didn't get to use my phone um, until I was under Wi-Fi at the recovery house. So at the airport I just kind of followed the crowd to get my bag. Before you get your bag you have to go through like um, immigration and show them uh, show them your migration form again, your passport and your COVID test. And then um, they just let me go. The agent there she did speak a little bit of English so she was able to talk to me. And then they let me go and I got my bags. After I got my bag, I saw a green sign that said like Salida or something and in English under it, it said exit. So I just followed that sign and when I followed that sign, it took me outside. Now when I got outside, it was like a gang of like guys just all yelling in Spanish. Da -da -da -da, mommy, mommy. Da -da -da -da. And I didn't know like, I was just looking like, what? <laughs> they were like taxi drivers, but like. I guess they were trying to ask me where was I going and things like that. The recovery house, well, Dr. Alder's recovery house, they actually ask for your flight information so they can send a driver to pick you up from the airport. So I'm looking around for um, my driver because they said that she would have um, a poster with my name on it. And I didn't see her. Like, I just saw all these guys, like, yelling, Bonilla, Bonilla. So um, apparently that's another doctor in Colombia. Um, so then I just said like no millennial like <laughs> millennial recovery house like Dr. Alder and they were just like yelling and then they like walked over to this corner and they got my driver and my driver had like they got this lady and she had the sign like this said Jeanne but I don't know where she was at anyways she was really nice um, when she picked me up well when they got her in touch with me I just followed her to the car and I know this was a third world country and it's supposed to be like really poor, but like it was actually nice cars at the airport. Like I saw a range, a Jeep, a Benz Jeep, 
like the car that she picked me up in it was like a Ford truck it was like it looked normal like I, I thought that I was just gonna see like poverty 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 and don't get me wrong I did see poverty I'm gonna insert a clip of when I was driving from the airport but like I don't know thought it was gonna be worse than this so anyway the driver didn't speak English either but she had this app on her phone where she can speak into it in Spanish and it tells me in English and I can speak into it in English and it tells her in Spanish so we were able to communicate that way she was super nice asked me was I okay was I hot like things like that and um we had to wait for the security guard and another girl who's staying at the recovery house who had got she grabbed the wrong luggage when she landed yesterday so after that um we headed to um the recovery house and search clip driving they drive so crazy here i'm in colombia just came from the airport on my way to millennial i don't know if i'm saying it right but Melino recovery house y'all they don't even look at the lanes like they just drive between lanes they don't they do what they want i was just talking to the girl i was so happy uh that she was in a car with me because she was actually really cool and I was talking to her and Dr. Alder's like surgery girls group chat and I didn't even know because there's so many girls in there. So we were just talking about a whole bunch of stuff. She's from New York, I'm from Philly, so she was normal, cute. We start, yeah, having a normal conversation, which made me also feel more comfortable about being out here by myself. So when I got to the recovery house, inserts clip. So I just got to the recovery house, y'all. I look crazy. I got on last night's makeup, so I gotta wash my face. I went out last night. My flight was at 3 a.m. Hi. It's nice. It's gated, as y'all can see. Millennial. It smells good in here. It smells like fabulous, so. Okay, so this is the room that I'm staying in. It's a private room and it has a private bathroom attached to it. Um, this is my suitcase. I'm gonna list all the stuff that I packed. They have a closet that's my towel. I just got out the shower and they actually have a safe if you want to put your stuff in a safe. After seeing like what the recovery house looked like, I was starving because I didn't get here till 2 p.m. which is really 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I FaceTimed and texted all my family and friends, let them know I made it safe and my phone wasn't working um, outside of Wi-Fi. So then I washed my makeup off my face. I went and ate lunch. I actually ate two portions of lunch and the chef cut up some mangoes and pineapples for me. And then I got back up and ate dinner. And I'm going to enter the clip of the lunch and the dinner that I ate. This is a dinner that they prepared. It's fish, vegetables mashed potatoes and is this raspberry juice all the berries oh and berry juice they make like fresh juice here um but it tastes different it never tastes like as sweet as ours so now today is wednesday um today i meet with the doctor um before i meet with the doctor i'm gonna go to the faha store i'm gonna record that ubers here are really really cheap um, if you want to go with the driver from the recovery house, I think they charge like $10 an hour. But Ubers are like a dollar here. Also, it's this app called Rabi. It's like Uber Eats. So if you want some food outside of what the chef makes here, you can order uh, food on the app Rabi. Everyone here is really, really nice and helpful. Like, they were doing the absolute most to help me. And I'm like, no, you're okay. Like, I'm okay. Like, I don't know. I think because I'm a nurse too, I'm just like no girl you okay like you can relax but yeah so i'm gonna record my pre-op and i'm gonna record um ubering in columbia and going to the faja store okay so this is the breakfast like i said i'm going to the faja store today and i have a pre-op appointment um but first i'm gonna eat breakfast Beginning, okay, stand here, please. Take out this one second. Take off all this. Scar is yeah, no, no problem. I'm worried about scarring. Okay. Okay, when I touch you here, mm -hmm. you got previous life for your life? No. Have you had any life before? No. No, eh? Never, eh? And you have no. the first no kids, time. Right? Mm -hmm. No, no kids, kids, right? No kids, eh? When I touch you here, mm -hmm. I can feel fat. You have fat here, okay? To improve the ways here. Maybe my preoccupation 
mi preocupación my worry, ahora my worry right now is a little a little bit que no tengo tanta tanta grasa I don't have that much of fat para un big butt y para un big tips for a big butt and a big hips I want the hips I have a nice uh -huh. size butt so I more so want shape okay and I want like the top of my butt okay but I don't want more projection ah uh, okay in this case all the time I talk to the patient okay what are you priority hips or big butt Hips. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a good answer because when I touch here, I can feel okay. That fat is possible to take in put or in hips or in back. In your case, you told me hips. Yeah. I will transfer exactly here if I can. Cuando finalice los hips. If I can, when I finish the hips. Si me sobra la grasa. If I have a little bit of fat left. Put in yeah. the back. I will transfer it to your body. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, perfect. All full stomach, all full side here, turn around. And in the back, full back. Yes, yeah, because I have like... This, uh-huh, it's ugly. Yeah. It's not good. No, <laughs> it's, not good it's ugly. Uh-huh, but here, take out all back here. It's ugly in that place. Yes, right mm -hmm. on the top. And when I take, when I take that part here, to gluto, your butt will roll. Your butt will look, it's gonna look, it look more good here, yeah. It's only with illusion. When I yeah. take this, yeah. will 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 look bigger, bigger when I take that fat. Yes. Okay? okay. And I promise if I take huge fat, I will put in hips and the back. Okay. Alright. All right. Yeah, just yes. fill me up up here. Exactly here and exactly here. Yeah, yeah. But the priority is hips. Priority is hips. Like I yes. was like, uh -huh. like this. And it's ugly. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, y'all. So I'm at this place called Skin Look, getting a baja. Um, I get my surgery tomorrow at 7 a.m. I'm the only one that um, the doctor is doing tomorrow. Uh, but I didn't get my faha yesterday because I had pre op with the doctor. I wanted to wait for my friends at the recovery house. They wanted to get their stage two as well. And they got surgery yesterday. So they wouldn't be able to go yesterday. So this is how I look pre-op. The stomach goes ill as much as my butt. Um, so they took my measurements and they're saying that I need a small, but let me show y'all what it looks like in here. This is what it looks like. Um, they have dressing rooms. They're doing construction over there. But it's just a small place where they come take your measurements and tell you what size. So this is the first faja I tried on. I want one with no sleeves because I'm not getting arm lipo. This one doesn't compress the butt. And she's saying that it doesn't really compress the hips. Um, I hope it doesn't because I don't want my hips to get messed up. That's my priority focus for the surgery. Um, mind y'all, I'm trying this on pre-surgery and it's tight as fuck. But I think I can maybe go like one size smaller for my stomach. But then again, I'm going to have like um, boards and foams in here. So this might be good. Okay, y'all. So this is the second Faha that I'm trying on. This one is shorter. Um, I like this one because it has the three hooks. Obviously, I didn't get surgery yet. So it was on the last hook. But after I get surgery, I want my stomach to be really, really small. So I want to put it on, like, make it get tighter and tighter. Um, this one doesn't compress the button. It has the butt out. And hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't compress my hips. But it's pretty stretchy right here. I just wish they had this material to go all the way over to the hips. Because um, I really don't want to mess up my hips. But... I'm gonna get this one too. This one and the other one is, I think it's 60 or $60. Okay guys, so I didn't change yet because I have to get lipo foams and add boards here. This is an extra small lipo foam that they have. And it has the sh three straps in the back. So you can adjust the sizes. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get these two fajas, this lipo foam, and I need to get add boards, so. I'm not sure if they have ad boards. When I asked the guy, he said they were out, but then the lady is saying that they have them. So I'll record my bag and what I got when I get back to the house. I got the two Fajas that I tried on and the um, the lipo foams. They didn't have front and back um, 
AdWords in stock, so I'm gonna buy that from Millennial Recovery House. Um, Millennial Recovery House did give me a, uh, a list of the things that you need, so that way you'll know what you don't have and what you have and what you can buy. Good morning, I'm on my way to get surgery. Finally, I had to take off my one nail from each finger. Um, it's 5 a.m., I'm so tired. My surgery is at seven, but I have to take one more COVID test before surgery. I had to get up and wash myself with the dial soap first and then the hibiscus soap. Um, and I called my family. Um, and I called my family. So, yeah, I'm gonna record right before I go in. And then, the doctor usually posts on his story. I'm gonna include that as well. And then in vlog two, I'll show you guys my after. And then I'll show you guys my after. How I feel. Most of the girls did not feel that bad though. Good morning. So it's surgery day. I got on my Walmart dress for after surgery. Um, this is not the usual clinic that the doctor works at, but he has to work here today. Um, they woke me up. The ground is wet, but they woke me up at 5 a.m. Cause I had to get lab work and a COVID test again. And now I'm about to have surgery. So I'm gonna call my family one last time, say a prayer and hopefully I like my results. Just wanted to show y'all how nice this clinic is. So nice. And they have Wi-Fi. I'm on FaceTime with my family. Okay, where are you from? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay, look at this. The procedure is lipo, full, full stomach, lipo, small, small ways. I will do transfer to hips. Sun in that point, lipo. Strength lipo here are small, small, small way for comfort to hips. Hips here, okay, full back, sorry, and up abs in here with three lines to look better. Lipo in the armpits and lipo in the chin, okay. Aggressive, aggressive lipo here and part to Ready? Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Hey y'all, so it's the same day of surgery and I'm in excruciating pain. It's very uncomfortable to lay down. I got ab etching, so it's like, I can't lay on my butt in my or my side because I don't wanna mess up my shape. But then when I lay on my stomach, it hurts too. So it's like you have to lay flat and then turn your head, which is, it sounds not weird, but I'm like when it's popped up pillow on my stomach, I might try without it, but like, y'all, this is how I gotta stand. This shit hurts so bad. And I have, I pay extra for the pain pump, but I don't know, everybody else is saying theirs is working, but mine isn't. I think it'll feel better after I get a massage because I have like, I just feel like it's a bunch of fluid right here in my vagina. It hurts really, really bad. I don't want to discourage anybody from getting surgery because plenty of people told me it hurt too, but like this is the body that I wanted. Um, I know it's my first day out, but like I'm so happy with how I look so far. I hope that like it doesn't go down too much. But yes, it hurts. It feels like at first I didn't feel it when I first got back to the house. Maybe because um the epidural like numbing was still in me but once that wore off oh my god i feel like 
somebody ran over my vagina and my butt like just that part with a freaking car like okay so y'all i took that ghetto behind bonnet off um so i got my pain machine to start working um i had the nurse check it and i feel way 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 way, way better like i'm able to walk around i'm still walking like it's a stick in my butt but i feel way better i want to show y'all Mind y'all, this is the first day. I want to show y'all so far. So it's going to go down. I am still a little bit swollen. But like, I feel like even if I do go down 30%, I look the fuck good. He did his thing. So, this is me. The thighs match, but still look good. Like, he did his thing. I love him. I love him. I wish he wasn't married. I will try to be with him. He is the shit. So, y'all, I'm going to record my massage tomorrow. And then I'll probably make a part two for, like, everything else. <laughs>